Dagdag Curriculum, Science Grade 4, Quarter 1, Lesson 5. Materials and their uses. Learners' takeaways. Hello kids! How are you today? Are you ready to learn another new lesson in Science 4? If yes, then let's start! Our topic for today is about materials and their uses, learners' takeaways. This is Teacher Aika, your online teacher. And here is our learning competency. Demonstrate ways to minimize harmful changes in materials, such as restriction of burning of waste materials and care in handling reactive materials. For our objectives, A. Determine useful and harmful changes in materials. B. Describe the harmful effects of changes in materials on the environment. C. Enumerate ways how to minimize harmful effects in changes in properties of materials. And D. Demonstrate proper ways for handling reactive materials to prevent accidents and ensure safety. Today, you're going to outline the graphic organizer about what you have learned in this lesson. You're going to utilize the graphic organizer below. So, the title of the graphic organizer is Different Effects in Changes in the Properties of Materials and How to Minimize These Effects. So, it is divided into two topics, which is the first one, Harmful Effects. And the second one is ways in minimizing harmful effects. Let's have first the harmful effects. First is too much evaporation. Second is melting of glaciers. Third, air pollution. Fourth, soil degradation. Fifth, corrosion. Sixth, acid rain. And seventh is groundwater. And under ways in minimizing harmful effects, we have... Reduce, reuse, recycle. Second, choosing eco-friendly alternatives. Third, proper disposal. Fourth, conservation and preservation. And fifth, education awareness. So now I have here the outline. Again, the title is Different effects in changes in the properties of materials and how to minimize these effects. So, number one, harmful effects. First, too much evaporation. Water disappears too quickly. Second, melting of glaciers. Ice at the poles is melting. Third, air pollution. Dirty air from cars and factories. Fourth, soil degradation. Soil gets damaged and can't grow plants. Fifth is corrosion. Metal rust and breaks down. Sixth is ground water contamination. Pollution makes water underground dirty. And the last one is acid rain. Rain becomes too acidic and harms plants and animals. Ways to minimize harmful effects. First, reduce, reuse, recycle. Use less, reuse items and recycle materials. Second, choosing eco-friendly alternatives. Pick products that are better for the environment. Third, proper disposal. Throw away waste in the right way. Fourth, education awareness. Learn and teach others about keeping the environment clean. And fifth, conservation and preservation. 
save and protect natural resources and habitats. And here is the second graphic organizer. The title is Proper Ways of Handling Reactive Materials. First, understand that some materials can react and change quickly. These materials might fizz, bubble, or even produce heat or smoke. Second, when handling anything that could be reactive, wear safety gear like goggles and gloves to protect your eyes and skin. Third, keep your workspace neat and tidy. Make sure bottles and containers are labeled properly so you know what's inside. Fourth, if you're not sure about something or if you see something strange happening, ask your teacher for help. It's better to ask questions than to guess and get hurt. Fifth, after you finish your experiment, clean up any spills or messes right away. Dispose of any leftover materials property following your teacher's instructions and last remember safety is the most important thing when working with any materials always be responsible and cautious and here is the answer for the second graphic organizer the title Proper Ways of Handling Reactive Materials Number 1. Understand Reactions Some materials can fizz, bubble, or produce heat or smoke. Be aware that they can change weekly. Number 2. Wear Safety Gear Always use goggles and gloves to protect your eyes and skin from potential hazards. Number 3. Keep workspace tidy. Make sure your work area is clean and organized. Label all bottles and containers clearly. Number 4. Ask for help. If you're unsure about something or see something unusual, ask your teacher for guidance. It's better to ask than to guess and risk getting hurt. Number 5. Clean up properly. After your experiment, clean up spills and messes immediately. Dispose of leftover materials according to your teacher's instructions. Number 6. Prioritize safety. Always be responsible and careful. Safety is the most important part of working with reactive materials. Next is Reflection on Learning. Provide each student with a worksheet or journal entry template. Prompt students to reflect on what they have learned about minimizing the harmful effects or of changes in materials. Encourage them to think about why it's important and how they can make a difference. And last, ask students to write a short reflection one to two paragraphs on their understanding of the topic. Here are the questions. Number one, what are some examples of changes in materials that can be harmful to the environment? Number two, why is it important to minimize these harmful effects? Number three, how do you think individuals can contribute to minimizing the harmful effects of changes in materials? Here are the answers. Number one, what are some examples of changes in materials that can be harmful to the environment? The answer Examples include plastic pollution, air pollution from industrial emissions, water contamination from chemicals, and soil degradation from improper waste disposal. Why is it important to minimize these harmful effects? The answer, minimizing these effects helps protect wildlife. 
preserve natural resources, and ensure a healthier environment for everyone. Number three, how do you think individuals can contribute to minimizing the harmful effects of changes in materials? The answer, individuals can recycle, reduce waste, use eco-friendly products, and follow proper disposal methods to help reduce harmful environmental impacts. Let's proceed with the formative assessment. Multiple choice directions. Read each question carefully. Identify the letter of the correct answer. Number one. What harmful effects can occur due to too much evaporation of water sources? A. Increase in rainfall. B. Drying up of sources. C. Decrease in droughts. Or D. Growth of aquatic life. The answer, it's letter B. Drying up of water sources. Number two, what harmful effects can result from the melting of glaciers? A. Decrease in sea levels. B. Loss of habitat for aquatic animals. C. Reduction in coastal flooding. Or D. Increase in freshwater availability. The answer, it's letter B. Loss of habitat for aquatic animals. Number 3. What harmful effects are caused by corrosion as a chemical change? A. Strengthening of metal structures. B. Damage to structures like bridges and buildings. C. Decrease in repair costs. D. Preservation of metal objects. The answer is letter B. Damage to structures like bridges and buildings. Number 4. What harmful effects can result from acid rain as a chemical change? A. Preservation of buildings and monuments. B. Promotion of aquatic life. C. Damage to ecosystems and buildings. And D. Increase in soil nutrients. The answer, it's letter C. Damage to ecosystems and buildings. Number 5. How can recycling benefit human in minimizing the harmful effects of changes in materials? A. By increasing pollution. B. By reducing the need for raw materials and creating job opportunities. C. By depleting natural resources. Or D. By increasing energy consumption. The answer is letter B. By reducing the need for raw materials and creating job opportunities. Number 6. What is a practical action for minimizing the harmful effects of changes in materials? A. Consuming more resources. B. Using disposable items frequently. C. Reducing consumption. Or D. Increasing waste generation. The answer is letter C. Reducing consumption. Number 7. How can choosing eco-friendly alternatives minimize the harmful effects of changes in materials? A. By increasing greenhouse gas emissions. B. By promoting a healthier lifestyle and reducing exposure to toxins. C. By degrading natural habitats. Or D. By increasing pollution. The correct answer is letter B. By promoting a healthier lifestyle and reducing exposure to toxins. Number 8. What is the benefit of proper disposal in minimizing the harmful effects of changes in materials? 
A. Increase in pollution. B. Preservation of ecosystems. C. Degradation of soil. Or D. Harm to human health. The correct answer is B. Preservation of ecosystems. Number 9. Sarah lives in a city where there's heavy air pollution due to vehicle emissions and industrial activities. She often experiences coughing and breathing difficulties. What could be the cause of her health issues? A. Increased biodiversity. B. Respiratory problems. C. Environmental preservation. Or D. Improved respiratory health. The answer is letter B, respiratory problems. Number 10, Jen's family runs a farm and they use a lot of pesticides to protect their crops from pests. Recently, they noticed that some of their vegetables have traced our harmful chemicals. What could be the consequence of consuming these contaminated vegetables? A. Increase in soil fertility B. Growth of beneficial organisms C. Contamination of food or D. Improvement in crop yields The answer is letter C. Contamination of food For the last part, we have the essay. Imagine you are working in a science lab and you need to conduct an experiment using reactive materials. One of your classmates accidentally spills a reactive substance on the floor. Describe step by step what you would do to ensure everyone's safety and properly clean up the spill. And that wraps up today's lesson. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss an update. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you!